into the pack. But while he's coming over, um, Tarmac has had 30 years' experience in electricity uh, transmission and distribution sector uh, right across the globe, um, and he's part of the Osnet Services Business Transformation Program, and uh, has. I mean, he's done some, some incredible things, but including the uh, stewardship of the $10 billion gas and electricity network asset uh, as owned by uh, Osnet Services. He's responsible for uh, the energy transformation program, but today we really want to hear from him about what are the opportunities that cre are created um, and the real opportunities, because you've seen it and you've done it in other places, how we now do it in our part of the world. Damika, good morning. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Sud, and uh, uh, great to be here. Um, just get my bearing here with the presentation. Yeah. This one as well. Aye. Aye. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I want to talk to you today about uh, the uh, more the network side perspective of uh, this transition, and also share with you some of the uh, the projects that you know we have been doing. Get you a bit of excited about you know some of the opportunities that particularly the uh, GNet uh, has in in the region. So, to kind of guide through that, you know, after the best way to introduce what we do at Osnet is talk about the supply chain, uh, and then uh, I'll add a bit of colour to what Alistair talked about in terms of uh, the transmission challenge and, and, and the opportunity there. Uh, and my kind of passion is community energy, and I'll just have a bit more time uh, on uh, some of the things that you know we are doing in community energy, and, uh, and hopefully you know, we can have a bit of a discussion around that. So to start off with, uh, I think most of you are familiar with this. Uh, uh, you know, we see uh, energy as a commodity, and the role of the uh, transmission and distribution is to get that from where it is generated to where, consume, uh, where people consume. So, from when you look at Osnet's uh, role, uh, you know, we have within Victoria most of the transmission network. So, on the left hand side of the screen, uh, lots of towers, lots of kilometers of transmission lines. So, that's, uh, you know, transmitting energy from some of the large-scale generation, you know, currently mostly in, in the lateral belly, uh, across to the, uh, the load centers. And on the right-hand side, uh, what, where we get involved in is in, in, in both uh, the distribution in the gas, as well, you know, which is on the western half of the state, and also on the distribution side on the electricity on the right-hand side of the state. So for us, uh, you know, we are here, you know, we are the Aussie Post. Uh, when you buy something, you know, it comes in the mail. So we are the uh, Aussie post of energy uh, for Victoria. Uh, and now, one of the key things that, you know, as we are going through this trans transition uh, to recognize is 30 to 40 percent of your energy bills are the cost of tra you know, transport. It's a significant amount. Uh, and the other key factor to consider is these networks have been built for, in a different era for a different area. So it's really, uh, it is built uh, uh, for the centralized uh, energy kind of generation where you large scale generation, you transmit to load centers and then distribute across, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in those communities. So I, I think, so just a couple of uh, pictures to give you a bit of uh, uh, context around that. So the challenge that we are facing through the transition is, uh, we think in another 10 years, uh, if you look at uh, some of the, uh, the, the forecasts uh, that you know, we are looking at now, 
uh, we expect that there will be no coal generation uh, in, uh, in Victoria. So, most of the, so it's 2032, 10 years time. Most likely all of those uh, coal generation, uh, highly likely that you know, they will be closed. And we need to replace that with some renewable generation. So that's the first challenge. And the second one, uh, Alistair touched on this, um, is uh, there's a lot happening in terms of a, uh, people, you know, electrifying, you know, uh, transportation, you know, the, uh, the electric cars to heating and uh, particularly heating and cooking uh, for, with the gas. So there is a trend uh, where part of the uh, decarbonisation, we are all we're going to move across to uh, uh, electricity as the, as the way of uh, you know converting to that, and that. Really, uh, the estimates are you know it's going to double uh, the, the generation that we need in the system. So, so there are two pressures, kind of a two kind of a challenging kind of a uh, uh, scenarios that we are dealing with as we think about uh, uh, the energy system. Um, coupled with that, uh, we, are is, uh, we are also seeing a significant amount of what we call the distributed generation and storage. That's where local communities, you know, by so their solar panels or local, localized, large-scale uh, 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 generation facilities uh, like solar farms and wind farms get connected to the local distribution network, not the transmission network, but the local distribution network. Uh, uh, to have a look at it in, a, in, a, in an, another way, you know, currently it is. Uh, only 70% of our generation is kind of a uh, coal, and how do you, uh, at the moment, we got about 30% uh, in a wind and solar. So, so the challenge, and you know, as you talk about getting the uh, transmission and the planning, it takes 10 years. We don't have 10 years. So that's the real challenge for us. Uh, um, how do we get there quickly, because that's what's needed uh, to get there. There's no investment in coal and others happening. So, how do you get there quickly? Where are we? Do we have to do that uh, transition quickly. And as I said, the network is designed for a, a different era. Uh, and that transition, you know, even with the 30% already, uh, you know, poses us significant challenges. You know, in capacity, the stability of the network, the reliability of the network. And also, what we are experiencing in the last couple of weeks, uh, the, the volatility, the market volatility, when uh, uh, because of the intermittency and unavailability of some of the renewable energy sources. So, it sounds, you know, the, probably uh, I'm painting a, a difficult kind of a, a challenge, but it is also a huge opportunity. So, how do you fix it? You know, the, uh, so what we are looking for is, you know, transition by 2032 to go to 100%. 50 to 60 percent of that will be based on large-scale uh, generation, so large-scale wind farms, large offshore uh, potentially wind, wind farms to a large-scale solar farm. But there's a huge amount of that will also be localized, uh, generating on your rooftop or, or, or localized small-scale um, solar farms and, uh, and community batteries, um, uh, which we think um, you know, potentially will be about 40% of the of the actual uh, generation. Now, for regions like you know uh, uh, this area, uh, the GNET uh, kind of area, it will be more than 100. You, you, you have a choice to have localized generation for your own consumption. A lot more than because there's plenty of roof, plenty of land. You you can choose just to have localized generation just for your own consumption. But of course, there's a bigger opportunity than that. Uh, because uh, we will need, uh, you know, nearly seven megawatts of uh, uh, seven that seven thousand uh, megawatts of uh, uh, generation in, in in the next kind of ten years. So there's a choice, you know, we, you know, they, you know, that's where our energy resources are within Victoria. Um, so we can generate our own, or we can generate more than what we need within this region. Uh, uh, and then, uh, you, know, do, you know, the investment, you know, if you look at that uh, 4,000 odd megawatts in the area can potentially 
attract uh, you know 10 billion dollars worth of 10 plus 16 billion dollars kind of worth of investment so Alistair touched on this again uh, uh, it has got some challenges though you know to, to get that you know to, you know uh, large scale generation we need to connect the, to the grid through transmission lines and getting a transmission line through uh, it doesn't matter where the uh, energy resources are is always challenging because the land use we are competing with the uh, land use uh, you know there are some no go zones you know, shown in the map you know uh, parks and other kind of things and then when you map you know where the houses and the communities are some of the other you know, it's always, you know, you could almost argue that, you know, you're going to have to have a balance between the existing land use and the future needs of, uh, uh, you know, building this transmission line. And this is the conflict that, you know, uh, and the challenge that we need to navigate uh, to, to transition to uh, this renewable future. Um, so I'm going to switch gears to more talk about the uh, distribution now. Uh, um, I thought, you know, the key message, if you want to take one message out of today's my conversation with you, it is this, you know, the, you know there are several renewable solutions. Uh, David was one of uh, uh, our customers, you know, who, uh, we did a solar system. He was looking from his kind of own, you know, wine, winery perspective. But I think the message is really, uh, uh, you know, a good one for the regions to have a think about. You know, there are options, there are opportunities uh, for the region, and and as a region, we need to decide, you know, what's going to work, work, work best for best, best for the region. Right? You, know, you can stick with distributed energy and then have a minimal impact. You can stick with the big scale uh, energy generation and and transmission will have some impact from uh, existing land use, but get a significant positive impact, you know, your, Michael, you know, your point, you know, significant positive impact in terms of the regional development. So those are the choices kind of, uh, you know, that, that I see that, you know, we have. Um, uh, so the solutions, uh, just to getting onto the distribution side, you know, which is not getting a lot of uh, coverage at the moment, but I think that's uh, uh, a significant area of growth for a lot of the communities. Uh, you know, with the use of the solar uh, panels and batteries, there is a, a huge opportunity to strengthen the local network, the power post network in this area, to a point where, you know, the, you will not have any capacity issues. And I'll show you some examples of what we are doing on the eastern side, uh, or reliability type issues. You know, the technology is here to be able to uh, invest in those areas to uh, address those, some of those uh, uh, concerns that we have. Um, so, I, in the community energy is a term that everyone kind of talks about. For me, it is about localized generation and storage. Um, so, if you think about uh, that, you know, there's so many things that you can do, and this is a kind of a roadmap that we have been working with some of the communities uh, that we serve on the eastern side, where we kind of develop that energy sharing capability. We need to repurpose our network on the western, uh, on the eastern side uh, uh, to enable some of the, uh, the, the capacity to share between um, users and, 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 the, and the localized generators. Um, and big part of that is solar uh, and also some technology, digital technology to enable, you know, think about uh, congestion uh, in, in a traffic system, you know, it's electric networks are similar. If you can store and then um, uh, manage digitally the energy flows uh, with the current investment that we have got within those networks, you can get more capacity out of it. Uh, so, so that's a significant uh, kind of way of reducing the cost uh, and getting some of the local uh, generation kind of going. Um, uh, in my mind, uh, I think that this is why I'm, I'm really kind of a great uh, to see that, you know, G, what the work that GNET is doing. Our experience is local leadership uh, and, uh, and the community uh, collaboration is the, uh, the, the secret source in getting some of those projects going. Uh, and I think, you know, this, this audience is very familiar with that. Uh, 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 and the benefits are huge if, if, you, if you can get that going. And the problem because of the, you know, what we have is a very disaggregated industry. You know, 
as Auslet, you know, talk about transmission and distribution. If you talk to a retailer, they will talk about uh, uh, retail. If you talk to uh, generation, you know, they're looking up about generation. Who is going to, you know, you know, connect all the dots together in a way that the whole system uh, works, not only just for the energy consumers, but also for the regional community that, uh, that, that we touched on, uh, on before. So, just quick some uh, case studies uh, to get, uh, you know, whet your appetite. Um, I, mean this, uh, I wanted to give you this picture to kind of give you an indication there's a lot happening, at, uh, you know, uh, in the, particularly on the community energy uh, uh, space. Um, and uh, the uh, driver for some of those projects are kind of diverse. You know, some are uh, driven by more, you know, energy kind of a cost saving uh, for, through self-consumption, um, others uh, for re resilience type activities, you know, uh, a couple of projects we are doing with uh, DELP on the east uh, where, you know, they were bushfire impacted. Um, so as a, as a uh, resilience kind of activity, you know, we are doing a lot of localized generation uh, and integrating that with the network. Uh, so uh, the key to kind of uh, some of these projects is to identify what problem you are trying to solve for that particular local community uh, and then uh, the technology is available for you to uh, solve it. So I'm going to run through a couple of few examples. Uh, so this is the... Uh, uh, you know, the Yakadenda is very uh, uh, organized and a, and a kind of a leading community in my mind in Australia to, uh, you know, about five, six years ago now, you know, they did this, uh, 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 what we call a, uh, a mini grid. The customers who are connected <coughs> to this network, they haven't paid a single, you know, more, on average, uh, no electricity bills for the last five years. And very soon, you know, they, of course, they had to invest in the, in the assets and very soon that's all paid for and they will have free energy for you know another 10 years uh, if you like uh, now the importance of this is not just what they did what it created in the community uh, so I, getting these investments going um, created a lot of local jobs you know the, the community is now at a stage where they are investing a lot more if that's community batteries happening um, they even have a, a community retailer today. So that's that community-driven um, uh, uh, leadership has created uh, a, 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 a localized economy in there to a point where, uh, so they have, you know, we've got electricians who now uh, have got, uh, you know, growing and in, in, um, employing more people to maintain these assets and build more assets of this type, you know, this is new asset, asset class. Uh, if you look at the retail, uh, community retail, you know, they are employing two, three people from the local community. So all that creates that opportunity uh, for, the, for the local region. I know, Michael, you know, you are very keen to do that in Ballarat in, in, in steroids, but that's what will happen. You know, if you, if you get these going at scale across the region, that's what will happen. You'll create local job. Um, you know, 30% of your energy is in retail you can actually maintain, you know, in, in locally, you know. So you, you can create jobs through that. Uh, uh, if you have a local community retailer for, for this part of the region, uh, for example, um, you know, some of that, uh, that dollars that's going to large uh, um, players, perhaps will be retained here. And that creates that investment uh, opportunity for the local. So this is another example, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Every I drive around, I look at roofs to see whether how many people have put, you know. So that's what's driven by self-consumption, yeah. So, so they are saving uh, on 30% uh, of their energy bills through having self-consumption. And, and I like to see every university, every, every uh, organization uh, putting up, you know, it makes sense. It's made commercial sense to do that. Uh, and there's a lot we can do in this area. Uh, this is uh, probably a bigger version of that, Deakin University, uh, uh, again a significant project. So they're going a step further. Uh, not only they've uh, looked at their self-consumption uh, with the, uh, the mini grid that you know, they have installed, that they can now access some of the other revenue streams that are available uh, through the market. You know, so you know, one, one of the key ones is you know, uh, to provide stability services back to the energy market. You know, y y because we have a battery, you can store energy. You can also do a bit of arbitrage. You know, when you you can uh, start 
start charging your battery through uh, when the sun is shining, and then when at night you know you can uh, discharge that, and and through the price differential you can actually get a commercial kind of a opportunity going. So. Uh, the good thing about Deacon is it's not just about commercial, it's about learning. So we'll be doing a lot of work with them, um, and I would love to do something like that here, uh, uh, to be able to kind of uh, get not only the uh, uh, energy investment happening, but also the education uh, and research activity that it, it supports as well. I think the last one that I wanted to kind of uh, introduce is the uh, standalone power system. So this, uh, we are doing a lot within the OS net network now, uh, on 2025 this year. Um, so this is for particularly for the remote areas, Chris, I know uh, you've got a significant in interest in this, um, where they have got weak lines or capacity is a problem or reliability is a problem. So the technology is now there. Particularly when you do it at scale, we've been able to uh, reduce the cost at this stage around 20 to 30 percent we think you know it, it, we can bring it down to about 50 percent so think of like a energy as a service or, 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 or a virtual power line so you can build these assets now uh, particularly in regional areas uh, and remove the lines so that's kind of what we have started early response for the community that a bit of apprehensive you know everyone wants to see a bit of the, the lines they are you know they think you know it's going to add value to their property and, and things like that but gradually, you know, we are seeing that communities are getting comfortable with the idea. Uh, and the good thing now is, uh, in the past, if you wanted to do that, you had to do it on your own. Now, the local distribution company is powerful in this case. You know, from a regulatory rule change uh, that happened uh, this year, early this year, they are able to provide these services now. So there's that uh, security that you know you can rely on powerful to do that for you. Uh, and these things won't happen uh, just you know, power code driving it, you know, it needs to be uh, community driven uh, because, you know, it's too, you know, uh, community needs to drive these, some of those activities. So I think uh, I'll kind of stop there. And I think uh, in, in summary, what, what I really wanted to uh, uh, leave with you is there are a lot of choices for the region and, uh, you know, both on the transmission side and on the distribution side. Uh, challenge for all of us is, you know, how do you connect those dots together, how do you work together, how do you get behind the leadership either it's through DELP or GNET. Uh, you know, OSNET is more than willing to pay our part and come, come and uh, you know, contribute the part that you know, we are good at. We need to get other players to work together because we need to build the whole ecosystem now you know, for this transition. So I'll leave it at that and... Uh, happy to take a couple of questions. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. I was actually thinking of I think, you know, uh, the, our kind of experience, you know, so we are doing similar kind of work in Phillip Island, uh, Malakuta, and other communities. So every community has a different starting point, yeah? Uh, so Yakarenda was a community was organized. Uh, uh, Phillip Island, there was a community that was organized. But uh, Deakin University, you know, mobilized the community around Geelong uh, because they are the one who took the lead. So my kind of take on that is, you know, we need to identify who, who the leaders are today, you know, of, of those communities and then build around them uh, as to, uh, you, know, you know, if you have that leadership, local leadership, you know, GNET is a good, good kind of organization to take that leadership, for example, we will join uh, uh, because it's easier for us to come in uh, because OSNET and a lot of the other players who, I, who can actually help are not considered as, you know, you're, you're part of the local community in some sense. You know, we want to be. Uh, but we need to be invited in. You know, Jacaranda, we were invited in, uh, and it was it wasn't. Uh, uh, we just walk in, and they accepted us. And we had to do a lot of work to win their trust. Uh, and same with other communities. So, I think my take, Carl, is you know, it's uh, who are the current leaders in those regions. Work with them. 
and then the support will come. Question to that. So obviously power in the past has been centralised and done from the central point. What you're presenting is almost a decentralised, almost a libertarian view of a power system. Um, how do we ensure... <laughs> no, seriously, because it's all, whichever community is the strongest will get the best results. Yeah. So how do we ensure that doesn't occur, which is the follow-up question to Kylie, where you're yeah. saying basically the communities that have great leaders will get the benefits and the communities that don't will get left behind. What is the role which is considered a utility to make sure that doesn't occur? Yeah, so... Um, uh, I think the you know councils is one example and water boards is another example that you know organisation that we tried. Uh, so there are and I think DELP you know you know Vicred at the moment is only focusing on transmission, but I think DELP you know potentially has got a good opportunity. So I, I, I think you know uh, to me uh, if you leave it to the communities, yes, you know there's going to be Yakana is a good example. They attracted more than from my mem memory you know five million dollars worth of grants because of the leadership. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from from. Uh, Yes, yeah, so I, I take your point, Chris. You know that that is a challenge. Uh, uh, regional development, you know, can 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 the regional development, you know, uh, someone who takes the lead and develops a plan, uh, you will find that players will, you know, uh, the uh, people who are happy to invest. Uh, there's plenty of dollars available. Will will invest. So I think the lead to me, the leadership is the key. Yeah. Plenty of dollars, please. That's the hardest challenge. I've got that on. I've got that recorded. I've got that recorded, Chris. Um, we'll keep moving. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Really Thank you. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah.